Hello, new to Stardew Valley? In this series, we're going to start out with the basics and move all the way up to the advanced. All right, so after a cutscene with a little bit of explanation of what you're doing here, you should have a kind of an idea of what's going on. You'll start in a house. So the game just kind of throws you into it, right? You have an inventory, and the, uh, right now it's on the top of my screen. Depending on where I'm standing on the screen, it moves, and it'll go to the bottom. It just tries to position it wherever it thinks is best for what you're doing. And you'll notice when you start out, there's a gift on the floor for you. When you open it, there we go. You get 15 parsnip seeds. All right, you can use those to farm with. Before we jump into all that, we need to go over the basics. So we start in a room here. This is where we're going to wake up every day. All right, if we go over, you see there's a TV. Make sure to check your TV every day. So you can get a weather report, fortune teller, and living off the land. Now this option here will change from day to day. All right, and so make sure to check every day because some days there will be a cooking show. And that's how you learn the recipes in this game for making decent food. All right, and, and a lot of times these shows like Living Off the Land will give you a tip. So, and this is going to tell us, there's one for all you greenhorns out there. Chop wood and search for wild forage to earn some cash while waiting on your first harvest. Now, not a great tip. It is a good tip and not a good tip. <laughs> all right, so you don't want to sell your wood, but you can sell your forageables. Right, you're going to want to hang on to your wood for upgrading your farm because it takes a lot of wood. All right, but this is about the basics. Okay, so then the weather report. This is a good one to keep up with. It'll tell you what's going to happen uh, tomorrow. So tomorrow is going to be clear and sunny all day. So if I'm farming, I know I'm going to need to water tomorrow. Sometimes this day it's going to be rainy. On, on a rainy day, certain things won't happen in the game, and also your plants will be watered for you, which will allow you to plan your day to go do other things besides farming. All right, so one of the other things you can do with the TV is you can check your fortune. And as we can see, today the spirits are whispering something to me. The spirits are somewhat annoyed today. Luck will not be on your side. So today's going to be a bad luck day. All right, so you can have bad luck, neutral luck, and good luck days. We'll do a more detailed video on this later. The most important thing to know is that on bad luck days, it's not really that bad. On good luck days, you have a chance of getting more items and better items. And we'll leave it at that for a more advanced luck video later. So you'll notice now we need to go over the interface a little bit. All right, on the top right, or you can see I'm circling with the mouse, uh, we have a few indicators up here to keep in mind while you're playing. And as you notice, time is always going up unless you're in your menu or in a, you know, in a, some kind of menu. So your days in Sardu consist of, so they start at 6 a.m. and they go until 2 a.m. Right at 2 a.m., if you're not back at your house in your bed, we can get into bed and we can go to sleep for the night. We can do this at any time during the day and it will go to the next day. Right, if you're not in your bed by 2 a.m., you pass out. And I mean, you can be rushing to get back and be right here and at 2 a.m. hits and pass out next to your bed. All right, there are some negative effects to passing out. If you're in your house, um, it, you'll just be more tired the next day. But if you're outside, even on your doorstep, Somebody finds you and brings you to your bed. And then when they do that, they pill for your pockets so you can lose items and gold. Uh, so be careful about that. Always try and be in your bed by 2 a.m. When the clock hits midnight, it'll turn red. So I know I just told you to be in bed by 2 a.m. That's the worst case scenario. You really want to be in your bed by midnight if you can, especially if you burned up most of your energy for the day. And we'll go over energy in just a second. So after midnight, you get a penalty to how much energy you can recover for sleeping through the night since you're going to wake up at 6 a.m. no matter what. You can't wake up late to gain your energy back. So to avoid not being able to recover all of your energy, you need to be in bed by midnight. Okay, so as you can see here, it says Monday and 1. This means it's Monday and day 1. We have Monday through Sunday, and then we have day 1 through 28 at the... Uh, on day, what would be day 29, which become, rolls over to day one of the next season, right? There are four seasons. We have spring, summer, fall, and winter. You get 28 days in each season. And each season allows you to do different things and grow different plants and find different forageables. All right, but we can go more into that in another guide. Just understand there are seasons, and so you have a time limit on certain things. Right, so let's pause and take a break here for a minute, and we'll go over this with you. 
The game has a lot to do, and a lot of it is on a time limit. And on certain days, certain things happen. There's a balance to this game on making money, doing the different types of activities you can do to earn money and to advance, and to interact with the NPCs in the game and go through different events with them and different festivals, different things that happen throughout the seasons. I don't want to spoil anything, but going into details here, just to let you know, there is a lot going on in the game and a lot to do, and there is not enough time to do it all in. All right. So you're just going to have to pick what you're going to do each day, plan out your day, and just do a few of those things. Don't try and do everything at once. Just pick something and do that. Don't worry about it. If you miss an event or you miss something next year, all right, the next time. So let's say on, this is just an example. Let's say on spring 3rd, if you talk to, you know, if you meet this one person behind a bush, this event will happen. Then if you miss that. That's okay. Next spring, on the third day, you can go do that, right? Every year, the events will repeat until you've successfully completed them. Just so you know, there's a starter wiki with a calendar on it that will tell you what events happen on what days. You can use that to kind of schedule if you want. Uh, it might spoil some things for you, so you might just want to play through without that. But if you don't want to miss anything, definitely use that so you can plan your days accordingly. All right, so this just pretty much tells you what the weather is outside, and this tells you what uh, season you're in so spring and it's sunny okay and this of course is how much gold you have and then these buttons here let you zoom in and out so if you want to make the game so if you want to see more or if you want to get into slightly more detail uh, it's a pixel game so i'm not sure how much more detail you're really going to get but you could really zoom in a lot if you wanted all right and then you have your journal here which it shows you the shortcut is F. You can open your journal. And then we have a couple of quests. All right, and this will just kind of tell us what we need to do. So getting started. I don't... All right, and you can read those when you're playing the game. All right, so now we need to access our inventory. So as you can see in here, we have our hot bar. This is our inventory. So as you can see, once we come in here, this bag is our inventory, right? And you can see we have all of these slots here and if you notice we have these are great these are kind of like highlighted out uh you can unlock these at a later time and of course you'll notice here we have some slots on us right this is where our clothes go and then this is where our equipment goes so we can get two rings and a pair of boots but those come later all right so for now we'll start with the basic tools we have an axe this lets us chop down trees and clear stumps and things like that. Then we have a hoe and this lets us till the ground and it will let us dig in certain sections of the game to get uh, the high fine hidden items. Then we have the watering can and this pretty much is what it says it does. It's a watering can. You water your crop plots with it. All right, so once you've planted something, you have to water it. All right, this is a pickaxe. This allows us to mine rocks and ores and things like that. And this is our scythe. It allows us to clear grass and dead crops. All right, the next tab is going to go over skills, which we'll go into more detail later. But just know these are the different skills you have in Stardew Valley, and they level up. And at each of these big bars, our skills will allow us to select a path to go down. There will usually be two paths, depending on, and you just choose whichever one is best for you. So under social, you can see the NPCs that are in the game. And we haven't met them yet, so we don't know their names, right? But if you notice, there's hearts. Right. This is how much they like you. Now, there are ways to improve how much they like you, and we'll go into those in a later video. Then we have the map tab. This kind of shows you where you are generally, and kind of gives you an idea of where everything in the world is. So as you can see, it's not a huge world. And of course, uh, there's a way to go out to another area, and uh, which is expands this world a little bit, but you can't see that on the map currently. The good news is when playing the game, you can only move, you can only move west, east, north, and south, and your your camera doesn't reorient, so you're always moving in one of those directions. So just keep in mind, to the east is where, of your farm is where the town is, to the north of the farm is where the mines are, and if you're ever confused on where you're at or where you need to go, you can open the map. Well, the next tab is your crafting tab. So as you learn recipes, you can come in here and you can make things. So as you can see, we have a few that we already know. 
All right, so if we wanted to make a chest, we would need to collect 50 wood. All right, it actually takes quite a while to build up 50 wood. So like I was saying earlier, you don't want to sell your wood. It's very useful for lots of things, including uh, upgrading your house and farm buildings uh, and crafting. All right, so the next tab is collections. So as you collect things in the game, uh, it'll fill up your spots in here. So you can kind of see there's quite a lot of things to collect in the game. And this is just one of the tabs, right? This is for items shipped. So as you grow something on your farm or your forge or something and you then you sell it in the shipping bin, it'll go into here. And then you can come in here and view what all unique things you've found. All right, and then of course, fish, all the unique fish you've caught. Artifacts, all the unique artifacts you have uh, you can find and that you can donate to the museum. though. Minerals and so on. And then of course, this is important, letters. So if you find letters and you can't remember what it said and you need to go back and find it, it'll be in here. So then you have your options tab and it pretty much lets you just change up your options. Now this is a good tab to know, uh, especially when you're starting out. So you can scroll down in your options down to controls and here you can pretty much read what every button does. And if you don't like how the controls are set up, you can set your own buttons. All right, so this will tell you how to move around, play the game, and how to pretty much interact with everything, except the controls are generally going to be set up if you're on PC for keyboard and mouse. Now, this, of course, won't tell you what the controller does. All right, and then we have our exit game options. You can come in here and exit the title or exit to desktop. All right, and that's how you navigate the menu. Since the game doesn't tell you what the controller does, at least if you're on PC and you want to use a controller, I'll go ahead and go over some of the basic controls with you. Now, this is using an Xbox One controller. Uh, if you're using a PlayStation controller or a, a Switch controller, you'll need to just pay attention to the cord or a Steam controller. If you don't know what the correlating buttons are for your controller, you may just have to experiment a little bit. All right, the joystick, left joystick, lets us walk left, right, up, and down. Right, the right joystick lets us move our mouse cursor in case we need a mouse cursor to do something with. The left and right triggers allow us to move through our inventory, our hotbar. The right and left bumpers let us move through our, if we had more inventory availability, so those other slots I showed you we could unlock. This allows us to cycle through those slots, and then we could use our left and right triggers to move through the those uh, slots as well. X, or left face button, uses your tool that you have selected. If your tool has a secondary ability, you can press the A button or down face button. B or right face button opens up your inventory and the triggers move through the tabs and B closes it. And then Y opens your crafting inventory or top face button. Start also opens your inventory <laughs> and then select opens up your journal and closes your journal. And if you don't like the joystick, you can use the D-pad to move around. And if you run, if you want to talk to somebody or interact with something, you can press A or down face button on the controller. And of course, the D-pad or the left joystick moves through your different options. All right, now for an extremely important detail. The energy bar. As you notice, we have 248 of 270. Many actions you do in this game, such as mining, hoeing, using your axe, or using any tool really, uh, will drain energy. All right, so using your tools drains your energy. When your energy hits, gets really low, you start getting tired. So once you run out of energy, let's just go ahead and show you. I don't know if I run out of energy where the day ends. All right, so as we get into the red and we're burning our energy, you can see we're throwing sweat bars and we're getting a message as you're starting to feel exhausted. All right, if you keep going and you burn all through all that energy, you feel sluggish from overexertion. Okay, so now we have, at the top of the bar, we have a frowny face. All right, if we keep going, you notice we're slower, it gets worse and worse, and then eventually we'll pass out. Let's stop time before our day ends here so we can go over this. All right, now, if you, once you've gotten to where it shows this symbol, you've now gained a negative energy. You're not going to be able to recover all of your energy for the day. So as you see, we're at 0 to 70, and we're continuing to use energy, so that's dropping how so as this phase changes, we lose the ability to recover energy once we go to sleep. So if we, even if we went to bed before midnight, now it's not going to be full. But if we combine that with going to bed after midnight with this, our energy is going to be really low 
starting out on the next day. So we're going to be able to do even less the next day. So managing your energy is very important. There are items in the game, which we'll get into later, that can increase your energy level so that you don't, so that you can do more throughout the day. But once you drop too low, you will pass out. If you pass out from running out of energy, somebody finds you and takes you to the doctor, where you will potentially lose items and money once again for somebody having found you, found you and pilfered you. All right, so at 2 a.m., if you pass out, somebody finds you and you lose items and gold. If you pass out from burning all your energy, same thing, except you wake up at the doctor's, which is even worse because you wake up partway through the next day. So you're not at 6 a.m., but partway through. So you're already lost a few hours. And then you have to get from the doctor all the way back to your farm. <laughs> so you really lose a lot of that day as well. And of course, you won't have full energy either. All right. So as you see, I didn't make it to bed and I was out of energy. Um, and then I passed out in my house. So I didn't lose anything. But if you notice, my energy bar is still at zero, uh, which means I can't do much on this day other than interact with people and maybe forage. If you enjoyed this video, smash that like button. Have an awesome day.